So this deck really, really pops off and the trip to heck is really what makes it pop off. What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joku DMD, and I am here with a deck from Japan. This is a deck made out of Dragon Ball Super card game cards from Japan that I put together. They're all really shiny, and it's so much fun to play. And today, I'm going to show you guys what it is and how to play it. But if this is your guys' first time here and you want to see deck profiles and strip ups and Dragon Ball Super card game content on a weekly basis, make sure to smush that subscription button if you're a returning member of the Joe Crew. Let's get into this Heku. Heku? So this is my deck box. I got lots of nice little shiny stickers here that keep me uh, fired and excited. So uh, let's pull the leader out. This is SS4 Sun Goku Returned from Heck. And I'm going to go over what the leader does and then I'm going to go through the deck. Very important always to have your tokens because we do run some blockers that make tokens. So here are my shiny tokens. We can talk more about that later. So this is the leader, Sun Goku. Basically what this guy does is when he swings, he draws. So what's really great about this dude is he has two ways to awaken. The two ways in which you're going to awaken are if you reveal a card from the top of your deck and it comes into play and you have two or more energy you can flip this guy over take your life down to five draw a card and untap an energy which is very very cool because it sets you up to not be stalled out the other way he can awaken is if your life is at four you can just flip him over draw two cards and that card advantage is nice now when he is awakened he's got a bunch of cool stuff that he can do when he swings you can draw two cards then choose one card from your hand and put it at the top of your deck and and he also has an activate main that allows you to go through your deck and find your unison and then you choose one card in your hand and place it at the top of your deck and then he has another activate main that's a spirit boost one mechanic so you spirit boost one off your unison and you play reveal the top card of your deck into your graveyard and then if it has a skill that plays it it will get played so the deck is a lot of planning you have to really think about all the different things that are in your hand if they should be at the top of your deck how to get them on top of your deck and how to play them off the top of your deck so with that said let's get into the deck pro file. So this is the unison. You got to run four of this unison. It is so good. It's a one cost unison and then a plus two. So it's set up for your minus two spirit boost, which we'll get into later, just off of one energy for playing it. It also sets up the top of your deck to play stuff off of the spirit boost skill if you want to do that, or if you have cards that allow you to do that. So one energy unison. It is a 4K, so you do kind of have to defend it. But even if it dies, your leader will find another one from your deck and it's only one energy to play and it just continues setting up for other stuff. So really, really Really good unison uh, turn one three marker yellow unison is just pretty pretty wild next we got four trips to heck you gotta play a trip to heck this card is so dang good you can activate main for one energy draw two cards put a card on the top of your deck and then reveal it from the top of your deck and put it in your drop area and that's just insane because there's so much stuff that plays out of your drop area you're essentially drawing two cards putting one back and playing one so you're plusing one and then playing a card if you do it right and this card just allows you to filter through your deck a lot it allows you to see the pieces it allows you to set up for your other stuff so trip to heck is essential really comes in clutch late game a lot and if you need to once per turn you can just activate main once you have three or more energy put it in your drop area and pop the top card of your deck off so this deck really really pops off and the trip to heck is really what makes it pop off more than anything so this is the pop off heku deck profile and it is pop 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 popping pop anyway next we got next we got trunks the brawler trunks the brawler is great because you just play him draw one and put a card from your hand at the top of your deck he also plays out of your drop area if he's revealed from the top of your deck so he can be one of your awakening conditions and on top of that he has spirit boost one reveal the top card of your deck placing your drop area and then a lot of the cards just play themselves out of the drop area so getting this guy on board is really important to use the spirit boost off of your unison also just to draw and set your pop off up because you'll draw and then you put whatever you want to pop off at the top of your deck and then make it pop off either with your leader or with trunks of brawlers spirit boost but really really good playing two of the gohan the brawlers because this is just a free blocker essentially you just set it up at the top of your deck if you need to protect your unison or you want to have a blocker on board you can just make this guy pop off and you can play him from the top of your deck pan the brawler at two now pan the brawler is good and it does more than gohan it does give your leader crit so i would run four but the downside is that it's limit one so you can't play this 
this card multiple times per turn. You can just play it once per turn. And that's why we have two of these and the Gohan the Brawler. But the benefit of her is she does give your leader crit and your leader is a 20K swing because whenever your leader swings on its awakened side, you draw two cards and it gains 5K and then you put one card at the top of your deck. Three of the self-restraint Son Gokus. I know um, this card is great because it is a plus, it's a blocker and a draw. So when you set this guy up on the top of your deck, pop him off, pay an energy, play him, you get to rest a card, draw a card, and you have a 19k blocker on board, which is pretty strong. You get a lot of skills off that. And a lot of the cards that you play will have more skills if your opponent's cards are in rest mode. So setting up cards in rest mode with him is pretty strong. Now this is where the spice starts happening. We got Vegeta the Brawler. Vegeta the Brawler is awesome. This is a negate. It's a one cost negate. And when you negate with it, it reveals the top card of your deck and puts it in your drop area. Now this is where you can really set stuff up on your opponent's turn because your opponent swings in with a card, you negate with that attack, you pay one for the negate, and then after you pay one for the negate, you pop off SS Force on Goku the Brawler from the top of your deck, make this man pop right off into your drop area, and when he pops off, he is gonna come into play for one energy, he's a double strike, deflect, and he KOs a card in rest mode. Doesn't say energy, does not get around barrier, but this guy just comes in and pops whatever, so if somebody's swinging in, you negate that swing, pop off the Brawler and have an energy. If somebody swings in, you negate that swing, pop off the Brawler and negate that. If somebody swings in, you negate with Vegeta the Brawler, pop off the SS Force on Goku the Brawler and pay the energy to pop him into play, then you're gonna pop that card. It's just pop, 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 and it's crazy because this deck pops off, I'm telling you. This guy is like the powerhouse of the deck. So this is Son Goku, the return. This is this is Son Goku, Return of the Dragon Fist, and this man is the gas of the deck. I mean, this dude is just insane. When you play him, you can play him for three energy, and then when he swings, can't be affected by battle card skill. So there is so little that can touch this guy. And when he literally says your opponent can't activate skills on battle cards when this card's in battle. So your opponent can't use super combos. All those super combos that bottom deck and draw two, they are not gonna work against this guy. Uh, he can't be like popped by things that come in and pop him. He's a double strike and he gets dual attack when you do the spirit boost too. So on turn four, you have the energy to play your unison. You play your unison, plus two on your unison, spirit boost two on your unison and after you play this dude, give him dual attack and the skill to not be affected and then just swing double strike 25k dual attack twice and it is just very very strong free play off the unison the counterplay vegeta prideful transformation this card's great also because it puts cards in rest mode so you can put a card in rest mode and then when your opponent attacks with another card you negate the attack pop off ss4 goku the brawler pay the energy and pop the thing that was in rest mode so really really good the other thing that's crazy about this man that i totally forgot to say is that he ko's two cards that are in rest mode also when he comes into play so if you set up to play this guy and your opponent has two cards in rest mode you just pop both of those cards and it doesn't specify they just can't have barrier but he still pops them super combo split i'm running three krillin moments before comeback and one balma hope for a better future so krillin moments before comeback is good just to cycle through cards and draw cards and bottom deck things you don't need because there are some extra cards and sometimes you want to ditch those extra cards but he's great just to filter through your deck bottom deck one draw two balma hope for a better future is great in those end game pushes where you're trying to get just a little bit more combo power because she gives something in your battle area 6k so instead of being a 10k she's essentially like an 11k super combo which is really strong and makes a really big difference late game that 1k can make or break a game for sure so i think one of these is really good just for the end of the game and then the krillitz moment for comeback are good earlier on when you're just trying to filter and cycle and get the cards you need three power of a super sand this card's essential we need to have some extra cards in this deck and the reason why i run three is because if i see one early i'm going to charge it and then i have the other two to activate battle on rest cards draw cards just helps you filter and press your opponent's board to get stuff in rest mode and set up for your poppers with the Go ss4 goku and the dragon fist goku because they will both pop things in rest mode so if you can set things up in rest mode with vegeta power of the super sam you can then pop them with your gokus and he also just draws you a card so really really good card for the deck and it's good to have extra cards which we will get into two freezer army reinforcements now this negate is awesome for this deck because when you awaken off your play a card skill you rip yourself down to five immediately and when you're at five, this sets you up to go to four. And once you're at four, your super combos are live. So the, the synergy between Frieza's army reinforcements to take that fifth life and go down to four and turn on your super combos and have a blocker and potentially protect your unison are all really, really strong things. So I think this card is definitely essential in this list. Vegeta's Final Flash. Uh, this card is great just to ignore card skills. If somebody plays if somebody plays Kai on you and you're in your battle step, you can just Final Flash the Kai and then the Kai won't be able to warp your board or just other things that you want to get rid of barrier or just get out of an attack if you have
have an energy open to get 15k for that attack is really strong and the card's just gorgeous i mean this is going to go on my energy almost immediately if i open into this card because it just looks so good android 18 steadfast android 18 steadfast technique this is just kind of a spicy card that i have in the deck and the reason why i have this is just for combo power there are a handful of extra cards so if you have an extra card and you're tapped out because energy can get kind of tight in this deck and you need to combo up you can often discard one of your extra cards and give this plus 6k which just gives you that little extra pump above your opponent's attack sometimes or that little extra above that they're not going to be able to block out of so this was a recent add to the deck my buddy steve and i were talking about how the deck needs a little bit more defense and robotic repost was the solution we figured out i haven't tested it yet but just in theory it makes a lot of sense to have this in as a negate especially because you have a lot of extra cards you can charge an extra card and you're going to use a trip to heck like pretty much immediately so that puts an extra card in your drop area and if you have one in your energy area by turn two he's going to be one energy and for boards that go wide quickly and you want to deal with their attacks they're going to have to tap something every time and usually boards that go wide are doing it early and they don't have energy to tap so they're going to have to end up tapping their battle cards or whatever other cards for to pay for reposts costs so i think three of this is good uh negates an attack gets a body on board and then it's combo power on your board so very useful and of course for our secret rare super 17 sibling absorb the holy hexagon of the secret rares you can see all the hexagons on this card i have been saying holy hexagon for quite a while so the fact that this card exists with so many hexagons don't want to say that i did but this card looks so good it's so strong it's so slept on it's so cheap right now it's like a hundred bucks it's dropped so much more than the other scrs and this scr is just insane this is i think the best generic scr in the game right now baby hatch really good but there are more counter counters now and baby hatch is a little less viable than i'd say it was when it was printed but super 17 sibling absorb is amazing because because they play a card it basically bloodlusts that card and you can absorb another card so if they're arriving if they're doing something in a battle step right like they swing with a card and then arrival a card off of that card skill you just absorb the card that is swinging in and then the thing that gets arrival gets its skills negated and then you have a 40k crit on board which of course you run champa for so you got to have that level two champa to give the 40k crit a double strike and double strike 40k crit often is not something very fun to deal with and you can get your opponent's life down pressure them and a lot of times you're playing this defensively so offensively you have the o energy open to you have the energy open to pop things off or play your dragon fist goku play the unison minus the unison off spear boost or dragon fist goku and just make him like way too strong pop off a of goku doing with your leader set cards up play a trip to heck i mean there's just so many different things that you can do in this deck it's crazy and of course the best card in the game the last card that we play is i won't let it in like this no i won't let it in like this bad rock there are no bad bad rock cards in this game this is the best card in the game Game. it's a finisher you can put in every single deck by the end of the game when you need to just deal that last damage he's the guy that does it play him for free overwhelm 225k swings are just really really hard to get over so you know he more or less deserves its spot in every deck if not in the side deck but he does get a spot in the main deck because he goes perfectly with his ss4 son the ss4 boys back from heck they've arrived and they've got a delivery for you and it's a deck and it's very very fun to play i have to say this is the most fun i've had playing a deck in the dragon ball super card game in a while the deck is really really interesting it's really techy and the thing that i love about it is it feels like there is so much room for growth and development and i feel like the skill cap with this deck is really high because there's so many ways that you can stack and orient your deck you can sequence your shuffling with your activate main on your leader side you can use a trip to heck to set stuff up you can use all the different one drops that come out for free you can set up the cards in rest mode to pop them with your gokus there isn't really insane stopping power the dragon fist goku is really strong and if you play in the right situation you're gonna get game no doubt but there is not a card that's just like play this card win the game the siblings absorb is a defensive card and it's really nice to have a 40k crit body on board the next turn to swing with absolutely but that card doesn't necessarily win you the game and all the offensive cards in here don't necessarily win you the game the deck has a lot of of defensive potential and i really like that and i think the sequencing in which you set up your deck and the more reactive you play the more that you could do with this deck so i hope you guys build a version of it i hope you enjoy it i hope you also don't forget to make really cool tokens these are my tokens for my two chilled army reinforcements i try and get them on board i like to swing with them and when it gets really dangerous occasionally i'll flip them over that has been the deck profile guys i hope you get a chance to build some goku a trip to heck or as i like to call him heku where the heku is your neku or as i like to call him heku i think 
think this leader is going to be a meta defining leader. I think he's going to be really strong. I think Siblings Absorbed is going to be a very, very viable card that a lot of people are sleeping on right now. So now's a great time to pick them up because they are cheap, cheap, cheap. But Heku is the man. Build this guy, have some fun with it, get your friends to build it, work on it together and make an awesome Dragon Ball Super card game deck and make a deck profile about it. I'd love to see it. Anyway, guys, thanks for coming by. I am a dentist. I can't end the episode without giving a dental tooth tip. So my dental tooth tip of the day would be, if you have a tooth that needs to get root canal and you're thinking about getting an implant, I would recommend getting that root canal. And the reason why I recommend getting that root canal instead of getting the tooth pulled is because you have something around your tooth called the periodontal ligament. And the periodontal ligament harnesses your tooth into the bone. It's the ligament that connects your tooth to bone. And that ligament sends a nervous impulse to your brain when you're eating food that translates the texture or feeling of texture to your brain of what that food feels like. So without that ligament, you lose the proprioceptive reception of the sensation that comes along with eating food, which is a huge part of eating food. So if you're able to get a tooth root canal, don't just jump into getting an implant. Get that tooth root canal and see if you can keep it in your mouth longer. It's likely it'll fail eventually, but at least getting some years out of that enjoyment of eating food is worth it rather than just jumping the gun and saying, I want to get this tooth pulled and get an implant in there or put some partial restorative thing in there. Anyway, guys, I'm Joku DMD. This has been a Heku deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time. So you've pretty much always been like pretty evil guy, you know, like there's lots of things that people kind of don't, you never really want to, people don't trust you exactly. So I don't know, you're living kind of like in a bean in hell, so I don't know exactly, but it's been really, you've had a really long time of not being a really nice guy, but you ended up doing some kind of nice guy things. So I don't know exactly if you are really not such evil guy. And I just was wondering what you had to say that about this, how you think that you are a bad guy or maybe What's the your what what is your big plan?